Hello everyone. Welcome to the NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. This is week 12, lecture two. In this week, we have been looking at the applications of remote sensing and GIS through case studies and live applications through uh, dashboards and other data sources. In the last lecture, we looked upon the NABAD Bowen collaboration dashboard where we looked at the locations of structures. So I'll just showcase uh, some more details that I have extracted uh, just by uh, going around with the software and website. So you can see here that we have uh, Dahod region uh, and I've selected the IGWP project, the Indo-German uh, project, watershed development project. And uh, of all states, Gujarat, Dahod, we have selected. You can see here Dahod, I've, I've selected. And a period of 1 Jan 2020, 12, which is the earliest, uh, and till date yesterday, which is the latest. So we have around 1,966 points of data. Uh, and you can click on this to see uh, what it is. As I, uh, There is a horticulture, uh, and then there is some water rejuvenation, tribal social welfare uh, society, board, a farm pond has been created, um, and then um, multiple uh, photos of the farm pond has been made, uh, some uh, processing livelihood options have been given for the tribals, um, and then um, some slope stability uh, have been done, okay, so pasture land, conversion of uh, barren to pasture land, etc. So all these are part of, these are buns to slow down the runoff so that water stays uh, and then uh, rejuvenates the uh, aquifer and soil moisture. So these are good for uh, applications and an image is very qualitative, right? So it's, a, it's an angle image and there's a lot of issues that can come with an image because um, maybe it is not taking the correct position, uh, sunlight, et cetera. So that's where satellite data added on to that will give a, a better application. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to show a study that has worked on this data and produce maps. In the meantime, I've also uh, selected Dahod region. And for two time frames, I have uh, selected the data. So for example, we have 1995-01-11. So Jan uh, uh, 11th, 1995, I have data. And then Jan 14, uh, 14th, 2022, I have data. Uh, I can remove this one, March is out of the picture. And then 1991 is also there. So 1991 can go above. So I've selected this in the meantime, I've shown you how to do it. You select Dahod, go to discover data. Uh, in the back to search, you can search for data and then uh, come to compare and then compare the data. So once you visualize, you can go back to which data set you want uh, and then you can uh, add it to the visualization if needed. So I've done it. Um, in the discover, you will find uh, which data set in the, in the search data set and then you will see which uh, options you have. Uh, and uh, you want to add pins, uh, different ad advanced options, uh, time span, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here in the compare, you could see that 1995 is on the top and on the bottom is um, the uh, 1999. You could see that the water levels are increasing for the same month. Could be because of rainfall also, but look at uh, the NDVI, NDWI, which is a water index uh, getting bigger. What is the NDWI? We can see here, green means less water, uh, blue means more water, okay? Uh, and uh, so we can see that there's a lot of built up area coming up here. And that is why you see a green color. Uh, uh, and then the blue color uh, signifies more water. Okay, so on the top, it is 995. I'm bringing it down. Now this is 1999 you're seeing. Uh, and if I reduce 1999, you will see 2022. So in the 2022 frame, Beautifully, you will see more water bodies coming up in Dahol, which is a good sign of water being stored on the surface uh, and being used for agriculture and stuff. So this is a, a crude estimate, but let's see what we have done through studies and come back and revisit this aspect. So I will uh, go back to my um, slide uh, for today. Uh, before we go into that, I would like to introduce you the 
many options to look at uh, applications of GIS do exist. GIS Geography has a website in which there's a lot of data, accessories, carriers, analysis, um, and then they are updated regularly, some steps, etc. I can just show you real quick if we click this. Uh, we will open the um, uh, web page for uh, the application. So I'm just going to go to the screen where it is opening up. Uh, it is a screen one, I'm going to share, and now you can see it. So you can see that uh, the 100 applications have been done uh, almost a year ago, and uh, just see how many rural applications can be there. There's agriculture, soil types, NDVI is big. So those who like to do NDVI, you can know that it is one of the big applications. Um, uh, and then Antarctica, Arctic, which is not part of us. Uh, and then climate change, uh, forest, uh, agroforestry for rural development. Uh, and then uh, disaster monitoring, damage after an earthquake, ecology, uh, habitat monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot and lot of data around this um, uh, line. And you could see that um, how you could take aerial photograph also in the military time and then snap it to the current areas also we can do. Mining can impact rural development. So you can also uh, map where the mining is happening, um, societal issues, uh, human rights, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of applications. Again, uh, solar panel, uh, solar options is very, very important for rural development. That is also happening. So we have all these and then, um, uh, as, as I said, we will get back to the presentation where we have uh, this link posted uh, and you are feel, feel free to go ahead and um, look at these options. Please remember that all these options uh, do exhibit a cross-cutting team uh, because rural development is a complex uh, entity. Uh, there's agriculture and rural development, ecosystem and livelihoods, domestic use and sanitation has to be addressed and climate change, uh, which is uh, hampering more on the rural development scenario has to be addressed. So all these are there and we have to uh, be very uh, focused on uh, collecting data and mapping them so that we attenuate or reduce the impact on the uh, ecosystems. So uh, we have uh, remote sensing identified for each and every parameter in this uh, lecture. So for example, for agriculture, we use NDVI, NDWI, Landsat images, uh, groundwater from grace, etc. Ecosystem lively livelihoods, which is mostly different depending on agriculture we had. We also maintained some uh, aspects of uh, <clears throat> some aspects of uh, animal husbandry and and uh, poultry farms, aqua farms, etc. Uh, domestic use we looked at groundwater, uh, rainfall availability, farm ponds, water for Jal Jeevan mission, and of course climate change. Uh, we have shown how to use uh, climate indicators and, and uh, uh, climate change scenarios from remote sensing estimates. So we have a lot of remote sensing for uh, rural development case studies. The applications involve evaluation of NGO-based work. Uh, so this is what we have done. In the first uh, section, uh, which is today, uh, we'll be looking at how to evaluate NGO-based work because um, NGOs are very focused on working on the ground. I work with multiple NGOs. I currently still work with NGOs, uh, and um, they are on the ground who are working very, very hard for the for the rural development. Most of them, I'm saying. Um, and what they do is they work very closely with the farmers uh, and stakeholders and bring them up in their uh, potential livelihood options. The salaries are very low, so not a lot of people uh, you will find in NGOs. Um, uh, and even even we we are finding hard to uh, send our students um, into those kind of streams uh, because most of them uh, want higher paychecks. Uh, but the point here is uh, it is very very related because uh, with less money they cannot afford to build capacities for um, collecting data, monitoring their impacts. Suppose we have an NGO that is working on uh, rejuvenating farm ponds or or agricultural lakes. Uh, the idea is they will rejuvenate it, people uh, have the potential benefits, uh, and they continue rejuvenating it. But normally what happens is they'll ask the farmers and people, oh, are you having water? And if they say, yes, great water is coming, then they happily move on to the next. But if someone else asks them, what is the quantity? How much water has been improved? 
what is the metrics, the yield that has been improved, that is very hard to quantify for them because they don't have budgets for putting people on monitoring. They have budgets only to do the work. They don't have budget to do the monitoring and evaluation. So the assessment of impact is limited. Um, and uh, this is kind of uh, sad because um, NGOs need to be accredited for their work and for the knowledge that they develop. If not, uh, then the system will collapse, right? If no one knows that the NGOs are working hard or not, then how will the funds come to the NGOs? So uh, only the top NGOs that are very good, uh, very well known will still establish. So it is important for them to do assessments and impact um, uh, evaluations. <laughs> for which we have worked with uh, a foundation and NGO called N uh, Daho, the NM Sadhguru Foundation, which I've already told. Um, and as I said, they have very less budgets for manpower and uh, models and softwares to uh, evaluate their impacts. Capacity is very low. Uh, we will need to build capacity for that. And uh, data acquisition, observation data is also not enough. So in this case, remote sensing and GIS can come very handy. Uh, in fact, they can alleviate all these stress on the system and uh, bring um, a clear indication of their impact and work. Um, so what method did we use? We used uh, just some ground data that they had. Uh, I will go through the study very in detail and show you how quickly you could do uh, and get published in a very, very good journal because uh, I hope um, masters and PhD students are also taking these courses. Uh, and it is very important for PhD students to write papers. Uh, what I'm going to show now is a uh, a student intern. He was not even a student under me. He was a student intern, uh, just internship two, three months. Uh, he worked very hard. Uh, and this paper through the team came out to be uh, a very good journal paper. So time uh, is also needed where we need to put a time on uh, the um, assessment period. Okay, so you need ground data. Uh, and time that is all you need so when when did the uh, structures or the investment or the infrastructure come in that is the time um, and uh, ground data of the locations and that's it the remaining uh, satellite data can address uh, one more data we need is the rainfall again if even if the rainfall is not available uh, from the ground we can always estimate it through satellite products because we have satellite data coverage of rainfall for a long long period so this article had come in the NRF, uh, the Natural Resources Forum, uh, which is the official um, journal for the United Nations, a very, very prestigious journal. Uh, very happy to say that um, a work by two interns uh, have ended up in this, who are the third, third and fourth um, um, authors on this, uh, who wrote with, along with me and uh, one uh, collaborator uh, from uh, Taiwan. Um, and then the uh, NGO person also. So number four is NGO. So you can see that the NGO person is also involved. So these NGO person normally, they don't have time to write papers or evaluations because they're always on the field. They have to work hard with the farmers. Uh, and since I've been on both the sides, uh, I know exactly like how much uh, time we have to spend on the field. And once you come home, you don't want to open the computer. It's just getting ready for the next day. So, um, we as academics and institutions should support the NGOs who are on the ground working very hard with the people to uh, bring up their livelihoods along with the government. So let's take this case study. Uh, we have uh, worked on the Dahod uh, district and you can see Dahod is part of Gujarat. Uh, Gujarat is in blue in color. Then we have Dahod region, which is this part, again, blue in color. And then we have uh, different basins, small, small river basins have been demarcated uh, roughly from the data they had. Uh, and we can also take a DEM and then do the watershed analysis. Uh, but also what you found is there is a lot of check dams. So the idea here is uh, the uh, the NM Sadhguru Foundation, the foundation is called NM Sadhguru Foundation. Uh, they invested a lot of time you can see here NM Sadhguru Found, uh, Water and Development Foundation, Dahod. Uh, they invested a lot of time in uh, getting budgets for building check dams. And then they build the check dams for the farmers. They didn't stop there. So their, their mode is one more higher level where they formed village communities to use and manage the check dams uh, through lift irrigation system and other things. So now we have uh, a system which is blocking the water 
and then water stays on top the surface water and then uh, some water in, uh, infiltrates percolates into the groundwater aquifer where most of the water is still there and getting pumped out using lift irrigation schemes to the farmlands uh, and most of this region are tribal region and most of this region were not under agriculture for the past 100 years. And that was because it was initially a forest. So it, the forest evolved with whatever uh, rainfall it had and soil moisture. Uh, but now um, a lot of forest has been cleared uh, and the cleared land could not sustain any growth because of limited rainfall. The rainfall is very less uh, around this region. We'll have the data to show uh, what is the average rainfall. Um, uh, it is somewhere around uh, 400 to 600. Uh, and then uh, with some odd uh, peak discharge and, and peak drought years. So we have all these uh, sub basins classified after we had the location of the check dams. Only the check dams, wherever they are, we mark the boundaries. And we found that this uh, specific uh, boundary, the uh, uh, Hadaf River Basin, had more check dams. Uh, and we had selected that for further analysis as follows. So what we did is we first plotted the time. As I said, we needed time of ground data. So when did the check dams come? So approximately 1990, they started and they started keeping on increasing the check dams. So this is a cumulative graph of the number of check dams. You can see number of check dams increase steadily from 1990 to 2000. And then there was some slow development, uh, not much development here. Uh, maybe they were building larger check dams uh, and it took some time uh, and then uh, slowly picked up again until 2015. So we used our data until 2015. We wrote the paper around 2019 and it got published around 2021. Uh, so uh, the idea here is uh, we had collected the locations and the time of the check dams. So now you have 1990 to 2015, the check dams. So if you look at the rainfall, and see how the indicators of soil moisture and plant growth happens, you will definitely see an increase because of the check dams, because the check dams have a principle of storing the water and then letting it percolate and then the plants taking it up, correct? So if you know that the check dams are coming into existence, especially this, this part, 2000, 2015, uh, a lot of big check dams came in, you could definitely see that for the same rainfall, the dash line is the rainfall. So for the same rainfall, you will see higher peaks of uh, the NDVI uh, because they are giving more water uh, in the storage rather than as runoff. So they're, they're converting the rainfall into runoff and then keeping them in the system. So you could see here as the results, uh, first let's see what is the NDVI value range. We have uh, a minus two plus one uh, and the plus one is dense vegetation around uh, 0.5 to one, we have said uh, good vegetation. And then sparse is three to five, point three to five, and then point one to point three is soil or stru rock structure, barren land, um, and then we have less than point one is no vegetation or water bodies. So you can see that the NDVI uh, certainly increased a lot. All these are the different che check uh, dam basins that we saw here. So these are the one, two, three, four, five basins, uh, which are given here also three, four, five plus rainfall. So rainfall is looked at this axis, right hand axis while the other all have NDVI in the left axis. So you can see that the dashed line rainfall ranges between uh, 400, um, as I said, 400 to 1,200 is the peak year, but more, most normally around 800 and 600, uh, the rainfall level comes up. And what happens here is, you can see the response of the rainfall on the NDVI is changing. So if the, the rainfall is the same, you would almost expect a similar NDVI because the water is being taken by plants and plants grow. But if you have storage, then the water is being stored more in the storage tanks and those have access uh, to plant growth, soil and other components. So you can see here uh, for a rainfall um, of around um, 1000, you have on, only the NDVI around zero, to zero uh, or negative one. So most of the negative uh, parts are here in the early, early stages. So check dams are coming, but slowly they will improve the quality. And then you could see that suddenly they start to peak and then uh, go away from each other sub basins, uh, especially more on the positive side, even the rainfall is coming down. 
So that is the impact. So the impact here is uh, even if the rainfall is coming down after, let's say, 2012 to 2015 and then uh, to 2020, uh, even the total annual rainfall is coming down in these areas, uh, the NDVI is still increasing, which shows that the structures are there who have buffered, who have stopped the runoff from the system and kept the water into the groundwater so that it can be used for crops. Uh, this is a very key finding in the exercise. Why? Because we we assumed that uh, NDVI would be constant um, without uh, any um, change with rainfall, uh, and the check dams will have slight indication on the soil. But it was not the case. Uh, plants were happily extracting more of the water and growing healthy. You can see the NDVI is very healthy around 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc. Uh, around sparse vegetation. So here you don't have dense vegetation. Uh, because of the rainfall um, uh, region and also it has been always like that for a long time barren land so converting a barren land to um, some kind of crop land is very very difficult but slowly it is happening thanks to the efforts of the ngos and the guru foundation uh, and the check dam idea that they had it was not super scientific uh, it was something that worked in the region and they just used it which is a basic basic science you don't need rocket science to save uh, most of the world problems. Uh, you just need good science, basic fundamental science. So here, the, the farmers are extracting more water. So how do you reduce it? By adding more water structures that can capture the runoff and put it into the ground. You can see here, this is another testimony of what is happening. Uh, we picked two years of same rainfall, 1991 and 2017, same rainfall. So someone should not ask us, oh, you took rainfall uh, high year and showing high in DVI. So we wanted to make sure that uh, the 1991 and the before and after are same. So around 650 is the average uh, rainfall. Uh, and then for 2017, 2018, and 2016, uh, it is almost the same. So there is no big flood before this, this event. Uh, and uh, this year, and then we saw that 2016 is uh, uh, okay, but 2017 was better in terms of average rainfall, 650 and 657 millimeters is almost the same. So let's assume that both are same, just seven millimeter difference is not big. Uh, and now you can see a spatial distribution of the location of the check dam. So these are the location of the check dams uh, in one of the uh, sub basin, which is Khan Basin. Uh, and you could see that how the uh, color has been changing uh, from a negative, the negative values are red uh, and yellow to blue. So blue is happening a lot because, uh, and, the, and the water flows from uh, top to bottom, right? And then you have a lot of water that has been uh, stored. So you can see a big, big blue color here, uh, which is being used for recharging and um, um, growing the plants. So NDVI value is really high. There's a lot of uh, crop growth and crop diversification also, which adds to this finding of increased NDVI. So we saw a graph uh, of how it changed, the average value of NDVI changed across the Dahod district, which is in the previous one, uh, and at different time scales. So we have different uh, sub basins, uh, and then different time scales from 1990 to 2020, we have the NDVI. But in the spatial resolution image, we picked two years, two years with similar rainfall uh, pattern uh, and precedence conditions. Uh, and we looked at if the NDVI has sharp change. And you can definitely see a bigger change in the top basin where most of the runoff is going to be uh, held back and then stored for improving the soil moisture, which improves the NDVI value. For NDWI, again we have <coughs> again we have the um, uh, negative values as no not uh, water present in the soil and are not healthy water levels, right? So you can see here from the uh, explanation of uh, what is the NDWI, you could see that the NDWI value ranges from minus to plus. Uh, and then uh, vegetation has smaller build values. So vegetation and built up areas have small values, whereas uh, the higher values are blue. Uh, and that is what we are also seeing here. So you have in the negative values, uh, which is mostly the um, built up and uh, barren land, uh, whereas the soil water uh, capacity has been increased drastically 
Uh, and that you could see definitely in the drought years, even though the rainfall is coming down, this NDWI value does not come down fast. Here we have used a zero to one as the water body water content. The positive values are reflecting water content, whereas negative to zero is bright surface with no vegetation uh, or water content. So this is just barren soil, uh, land built up, uh, and um, you have uh, less water content in the soil. So inside the soil, there's more water content, and that is even true during the less rainfall year, uh, which is being supported throughout this image uh, because of the um, use of satellite data to understand this um, phenomenon. Uh, so you can see downwise difference water index trends from 1990 to 2018 uh, for the study sites in Dahod, India. Uh, and it clearly says that due to the increase of check dam, the NDWI values have increased, A, eh? and also when the rainfall comes down, the NDWI value does not plummet down at once because there is water storage in the water structures. So it will, it will help to improve the NDWI and NDVI value, which we see in this small exercise. Um, this is very, very important because nowhere you, could you see that the uh, NDWI is above peaking the um, rainfall uh, data in a high uh, extreme. So for example, it's a positive rainfall, it goes positive, but here the negative ne rainfall is going down uh, and you should expect the NDWI and NDVI to go down, but you could see that both are either stable, it just stays stable or it goes actually up. And the up is because of, you have a good water storage, which is still recharging the uh, surrounding area from the check dams. So with this, uh, I think we have looked into one exercise where we have uh, this change in the rainfall pattern, but still it doesn't negatively impact the NDWI value. And that is purely because of check dams, uh, because check dams do have that potential of doing it. So this is a spatial recognition. Um, and as I said, the NDVI may not change drastically because only small, small vegetation shrubs are grown. Uh, if you go to ND, uh, this region, uh, the tribal region of Dahod, uh, you'll see them mostly growing uh, pickles, chilies, uh, some uh, fruits and vegetables like tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, etc. but not high value crops and crops that can cover the entire land. So NDVI would not be a great um, estimation, but NDWI, which talks about the water content is, and you could clearly see that everywhere it was red during the 1991-650 mm rainfall period, but during the 2017-657 uh, millimeter rainfall period, you could see that it has been uh, improved from, from uh, 003, uh, 0 0.03 to uh, 0 0.1 uh, to 0.5. So all of this area is converting back to positives, um, and the positives is definitely due to the uh, increase in recharge uh, from the check dams and spatial distribution of the water to all these locations. And all this was done without even going to the field because I know the field, I've been to the field, but a student had only very limited time of two to three months to work on this. So we gave them the location of the check dams, gave them the theory that the check dams uh, the hypothesis, the check dams improve the NDWI or the null hypothesis, it does not improve the uh, NDWI value, for which we had extracted the values and then plotted it uh, and then uh, see visually comparison and also uh, a very quantitative way of comparison because now we have the values, pixel values. So we can quickly say that 80% of these uh, pixel values are above the uh, red values. So that clearly indicates that the soil water content and the surface water uh, body storage across the basin has improved that drastically uh, because of the check dams. You could also see more and more of this happening in the downstream areas because water can percolate from high elevation to low elevation. And that is what you're seeing that the water comes down uh, and then gets reallocated into multiple sectors. So those who cannot do this as a full exercise, this exercise is done like you download the um, Dahod map, first step, and then you can put in the location of the check dams, download the rainfall, download the Landsat bands. Uh, basic bands was for NDVI, we had 
red and nwir minus uh, red and then nwir uh, plus red whereas for this ndwi you could use a different band which is given here so normalized difference uh, vegetation index you can have for sentinel 2 i think we use sentinel yeah, landsat landsat images because uh, those are older images so b b3 minus b5 by b3 plus 5 uh, and for sentinel you can use b3 b8 b3 b8 so uh, really good really good uh, data set that can help these are very very important indicators and that's why sentinel hub is also having it um, and you can clearly see that the um, difference between the images is very comparable right so i'm i'm just going to keep uh, this image to the side okay here and then this can come to until the fourth half and then this can come here so you could see that on the right side you have a sentinel image from 2022 in jan so almost jan let's say the same rainfall is happening a uh, similar rainfall uh, but you have better water bodies number of water bodies uh, and the number of uh, water structures are really high uh, which is really good to see uh, whereas here okay you can see that it is all white this is no not enough water uh, and uh, this is also not enough water somewhere good water is there and then you have these big water bodies but all of this is being increased drastically much more deeper water levels are le there and that is what is reflecting in the ndwi values so with this uh, i think we have showcased one study uh, the time taken is very less uh, two months is needed if you know how these gis works uh, and honestly i'm saying uh, if the student uh, knew how to work with this dashboard uh, he would have done it within a month also so you can just uh, include your area of interest download your data or upload your file for your uh, boundaries uh, and then after you log in you can just extract these data sets uh, as needed and then you do have a uh, data protocol uh, to sign up and say i need this data and boom the data comes so you could actually do wonders uh, with this uh, area of data and as i said you can you can add your shape file of it so first basically you can make the shape files in gis or google Earth platforms and then save it as a shape file bring it here and then download the data so it's always easy to uh, download the data uh, from these sources uh, it's legit it's a urban space agency so you won't have big bugs uh, while storing the data just be careful you don't have pop-ups uh, which could have uh, been done by previous installations of other softwares not uh, qgis Okay, so you can download this image as a JPEG. You want to show options or not, uh, and then uh, with no georeference, or uh, you can georeference it. Okay, so you can download and then georeference also. As I said, you can do uh, analytical. Basic download image option is there. Maybe they're asking you to pay. Initially, these were also free. They gave free access to this, but now you have to pay. So the point here is you can quickly do these maps. You don't have to take and subtract two images to calculate the values you can quickly do this and then estimate the differences based on the water that is being stored in the check dams and to be honest uh, there's not a lot of these studies that have been done like this and one of the reasons that's why this has been accepted in a very very prestigious journal with this i would stop today's lecture and i will see you in the next lecture where we'll talk more about some applications from the group and how you can use rs and gis for addressing them Thank you.